This is the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast with Sound Sam, a new podcast for engaged couples concerned about wedding planning and family expectations but want a stress-free, fun, and unforgettable wedding. Hi, I'm Sal Fusco of After Hours Events of New England. In my 40 years, I've performed at over 3,500 weddings. Working consistently keeps me in tune with the wedding industry. Hi, I'm Sam from Atmosphere Productions Disc Jockey Service. I've been DJing since the mid-70s in radio, nightclubs, and thousands of weddings, helping and interacting with hundreds of engaged couples. Welcome to the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast. Many couples forget about the important task that they still need to cross off their to-do list after the wedding is over. From thanking your guests and vendors to leaving vendor reviews and having your wedding dress cleaned and preserved. By the time this edition is over, you'll know what you need to do after the wedding and honeymoon is over. With over 80 years of combined wedding experience and insider information... This is Stress-Free Wedding Planning with your hosts, Sal and Sam, a new podcast for engaged couples who are stressed about wedding planning and family expectations, but want to have a fun wedding. Listen now for revealing wedding insider secrets, tips, and strategy or lesson that you'll be able to implement for a stress-free wedding, information that you just can't miss and may just change your life. Take the journey with us from worry and concern to a stress-free and unforgettable wedding day. The Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast with Sal and Sam. Learn more about our experience and journey to help you with stress-free wedding planning in the trailer or pilot of this podcast. Today's edition about must-do post-wedding task is brought to you in part by Clear Vision Productions and the Wedding Styles of Connecticut Wedding Shows. But first, if you have a question or concern, go now to Facebook and join us on the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Community and ask away. You know, many couples forget about the all-important tasks that they still need to cross off their to-do list after the wedding is over. Today, we'll go over that to-do list from thanking your guests and vendors to finding creative ways to utilize your flowers and favors. Get your papers and pens out, kids. Class has begun. You're listening to the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast. So, Sal, first on our list is sending those all-important thank you cards. Very important, isn't it? Oh, very important. And this is something that many couples don't really take care of properly sometimes. Don't take forever to send out your thank you cards. And I'm going to tell you who's going to thank you the most. Your parents and your in-laws, because they're going to hear about it from other family members oh, yeah. if you do not get those things out. Time is usually doing it within 90 days of the wedding. Go a little later, that's when people start talking and you don't want that to happen. I'll be honest with you, Sal. I, I'm still hearing from my wife, from relatives who haven't sent thank you cards for gifts that we've sent for their weddings. It is one of those obnoxious little things that really digs in the back of people's mind when they think that they went to a wedding and they gave a gift or they gave money and it's a year later and they still haven't received a thank you card. So I think what happens sometimes, Sam, is, that, you know, with the younger generations, they kind of think, well, I said thank you at the wedding about things. Do I really have to send a thank you card? And the answer is absolutely Yes. Now, you don't necessarily have to send a paper one in the mail, which is great. I mean, that's the best way to do it. So don't get me wrong. There are a lot of electronic ways that you can do it nowadays that makes it very easy. So there's really no excuse for not sending a thank you card. Yeah. And keep in mind, there might be some guests who are not part of the electronic world. So you still have to send out a paper version to them. Now, here's an old tradition. That is having your wedding dress cleaned and preserved. I'm not sure why this is such a big thing to do because the guys, all they do is return their tuxes to the suit store. That, that That's the extent of the, what they have to do. But it is still popular to clean and preserve that wedding dress, right? Sometimes what you're thinking is one day my daughter will get to wear this or even a granddaughter might wear this at her wedding. So preserving it makes all the sense. So you can't just throw it in a bag. And throw it in a corner of uh, your closet and expect it's going to be preserved. There's actually special ways to do this to make sure that nothing happens to that dress. Yeah, and there is a tradition of wearing uh, something borrowed, something blue. You can maybe use parts of your mother's old wedding dress, or you can have it retailored. There's loads of ways that you can retool it, but in all honesty, most of the time, I know my daughter is never going to want to wear my 
wife's old wedding dress because it's out of style. But this is something that is a tradition that, that if you want to do, you certainly can. Oh, yeah. Uh, I had a bride who actually took from her mom's dress, and uh, the part of it that she used was able to be used to bake a veil. So hey. that was a cool little thing to you know kind of bring it all around. That's a really neat idea. Next up is gift and printed wedding photo albums. Now, I know the photographer provides uh, your printed wedding album, which I suggest don't just go digital, have a physically printed wedding album. But you can also gift smaller versions of that to aunts, uncles, parents, or to friends. That There is a whole market online that uh, does that. I think especially for parents and your in-laws, having a very special book that's different from anyone else that you might make for. Uh, sometimes the you know the best man and the maid of honor, you don't have to go crazy and make a book for everyone. That could get really expensive. But to, for the very important people, uh, grandparents, things of that nature. Here's the next one. How about repurposing your flowers? What can we do to repurpose the flowers, Sam? Well, <laughs> one of the great things in having your flowers, you can have them pressed and made into a frame. Uh, there are loads of different ideas you can do. Go on to Etsy or go on to Pinterest. Loads of ways you can repurpose those flowers. And one of the things that you can do actually on the day of the, the wedding is find out if there's a nursing home close to the facility. And if you don't want to repurpose the flowers yourselves, you can always give the flowers to the nursing home. They're always willing to take them, but call ahead first. Yes. And uh, another thing we've seen is couples actually giving away her flowers at the wedding itself. So when people are leaving, she's handing a little gift of flowers to everyone. And that's another way to, to get rid of them. Yep. Great idea. Reusing leftover wedding favors. People are still doing wedding favors, Sam. I, you know, it's one of those things that I, I thought those days were were over. You know, the little matchbox with your name on it. Yeah, I I thought that wedding favors were a foregone conclusion, but I guess they're coming back in popularity again. You know, I, sometimes some of these are hard to repurpose. Like I just had a a wedding that I did this weekend that gave out two things. They gave out a koozie and they gave out a bottle opener. So I'm not sure how yeah. I, I would repurpose that at this point. <laughs> but uh, I know if you give me those hard almond uh, candies that we used to get at all those Italian weddings, I will be more than happy to take them from you and uh, make good use of that. Yeah, you'll reuse it all right. <laughs> <laughs> so here's a really important one, at least for your vendors, is you leaving vendor reviews. There is so many places to do it. Uh, for many of us, we love for you to do it on the knot, wedding wire, especially on Google nowadays, because that helps our websites out and even on Facebook. So anywhere you could give a review and it's, it's very simple. Type one out, copy and paste everywhere else. So it's just done one time. Reviews are so important, especially if you have hired a local vendor, because reviews are what they live and die for. Even if there were a few mistakes or something went wrong, you can still write a positive review. Just because something somebody did uh, one thing wrong at your wedding, it doesn't mean to say that they were a bad vendor. So you have to have context as well, because you don't want to get yourself into the trouble of getting sued for saying something that is a half truth or not a truth when you write a bad review online, because uh, vendors have been known to sue brides and they win. Yeah. So, you know, if you have a problem with a vendor, just reach out to them and talk to them. We're all humans and uh, errors are made. And this could be a very good learning experience to make sure this never happens again. So we're to the next thing now, Sam. And I'm not understanding this anymore. And that's uh, freeze the wedding cake, uh, which is usually the top layer of the cake. And you're supposed to keep it in your freezer for a year. So when you have your one year anniversary, you're going to eat this thing. Not happening. It is a tradition that is long lost its flavor in my mouth anyway. It's not something that uh, I would suggest that you do, but it's a tradition that some people do. What I always thought was a good idea is you, you know which cake you got, you know where you got it from. When that year uh, comes up, 
go back to that bakery and have them make a real small version of it for you so you could have that little thing so you kind of does bring the memory back of the uh, of the day because let's be honest that cake is not going to taste the same frozen after a year so uh sometimes it's just best to uh, forego and i'm seeing more people foregoing the cake anyway so they're not even going to have the cake to bring home to freeze anyway i would think a year later have your bakery make a little cake for the two of you so you can have that little remembrance of your big day that's a splendid idea sal so we've just taken care of a portion of your uh, must-do post-wedding task when we come back we're gonna talk about some personalized gift for the parents how you do social media reviews and how to properly store china and silverware and the big one how to change your name. You're listening to the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast. Wedding Tip Wednesday is brought to you by Emerge Cosmetics. Are you ready to emerge? A new line of luxurious lipsticks and lip glosses created with the intention of empowerment and coming into who you truly are. Strong, beautiful, and confident. Use coupon code EBI10 at shopemergecosmetics.com for an instant 10% discount. That's coupon code EBI10 for 10% discount at shopemergecosmetics.com. Emerge as the true you. On today's Wedding Tip Wednesday, RSVP no-shows. Even though people RSVP yes to attending your wedding, you still have no-shows. So plan your food and drinks accordingly. Isn't that amazing that you uh, send out RSVPs and people don't reply? This happens all the time, Sam. I I just don't know why it happens. Everyone needs to RSVP when you get one. Please have courtesy towards the couple. Don't make them trying to find you, trying to call you, email you, text you, any way to get to you. There's a lot of stress going into planning a wedding. So let's make it a little simpler for them. You don't want the couple to spend the last few weeks of the wedding chasing people down to reply yes to the RSVP or no, because those counts have got to go in for the meals. And that's the point of this Wedding Tip Wednesday is You may have to reduce the amount of your food count simply because you have fewer people. Couples are inviting 100 people and only 50 people are showing up. You need to be prepared for that in your planning. If you realize you're not able to come, let that couple know because then they could probably get some money taken off their bill. Yes, because you have to pay for that meal if somebody doesn't show up on the day. If you suddenly just show up. That's the opposite thing too. You need to find meals when they weren't accounted for. So that's why that RSVP is so important. That's another tip from Sal and Sam. Wedding Tip Wednesday is available on the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Facebook group page every Wednesday. Join the group for free. Don't know what to do for your first dance? Is your future spouse having trouble picking a song to dance with their parent? Worry no more. I have the answer. Go to after hours events of ne.com forward slash contact guest that is c-o-n-t-a-c-t-g-u-e-s-t and you'll be able to listen to hours of music to help you select the right songs for your upcoming wedding again go to after hours events of ne.com forward slash contact guest you said yes now the planning begins the norwich inn bridal show is a must join us on sunday april 30th from 11 to 2 win over ten thousand dollars in grand prizes, a Caribbean giveaway, three sets of wedding bands, and $5,000 toward your wedding celebration at the Norwich Inn. Free goodie bags, gourmet food samples, entertainment, and so much more. Sponsored by Atlantic Coast Entertainment, Darius Trepka Photography, Dinner for Two, and the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast. Get your tickets at bridalshowatnorwichinn.com. That's bridalshowatnorwichinn.com. Do you want access to a stress-free wedding planning process? Then go to our website, allthews.atmosphere-productions.com and get my free report. Eight questions you must ask a wedding professional before booking them. Get it today. That's allthews.atmosphere-productions.com. Look for the free report and learn to shop like a pro from a pro and go from concern and worry to stress-free wedding planning. And now back to the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast. Thanks for joining us again. Our discussion is about must-do post-wedding tasks. Hi, I'm Sam from Atmosphere Productions Disc Jockey Service, weddings with expert knowledge and the difference in quality. Hi, I'm Sal from After Hours Events of New England, the leader in making your wedding stress-free. We're coming back from where we just talked about some uh, ideas and things you need to kind of do after you are done with your wedding and, of course, your honeymoon. Things such as sending thank you cards, 
having your wedding dress cleaned and preserved, how to repurpose your flowers, leaving vendor reviews, and even freezing the wedding cake. What's the next subject? Well, one of the things that you should definitely do is give gifts to your in-laws and parents, especially personalized gifts, especially if the parents helped you with the rehearsal dinner or maybe even they paid for the entire wedding. It's great to show that you appreciate their contribution. There are different types of things, so I'm not going to go into the the loads of different gifts that you can get, but you can go to Etsy and you can go to Pinterest and see the various ideas that are just practical, personal, you know, beautiful ways to say thank you. There's so many ways, and and those are two great places to go to because they're just a wealth of information to really help you out with that. Another thing here, uh, Sam, is uh, finish your registry. What does that mean? Yeah, you know, that, that's, a, that's a very curious one because you would think that before the wedding, the registry would be completed, but there are still some left off items that are on the list. And, you know, sometimes the registry is maybe only good for 30, 60 or 90 days after the wedding. Well, you may want to pick up some of those items uh, from the registry yourself. And it's a good thing to you know, print it off if you, you can, or at least the stuff that you didn't get as gifts, if you still want them that are on your registry, that's a great time to finish it up. And then you can just close out the registry. So technology is great now, Sam. Many times these registries will actually send you an email reminding you that there's still these items left on your registry. And guess what? We will give you X amount off, a percentage off, if you want to purchase them now within the next 30 days. So that's another way of getting something at a better deal and uh, still be able to get everything you want. Now, why does your registry not get that whole list isn't knocked out before the wedding? It might be because you had guests who gave you a monetary gift instead, and they thought that would be better for you. All right. Next up, doing a social media review. Now, Sam, this this doesn't mean doing reviews per se, but uh, doing something that they actually started before the wedding. And what would that be? One of the great things about Facebook and Instagram, you, you can do stories. So you can correlate all of the pictures. You know, if you have a hashtag, you can correlate all those pictures and make a story. There's loads of different little things like that that you can do. That's why doing a hashtag is such a great thing, because after the wedding, you can do a social media review of your entire wedding day. That's essentially what, you know, doing a social media review means. It brings all the good feelings back again. So, you know, you get to see all those beautiful pictures and kind of remember the day. And when you put something out there like that, too, you tend to get even more stuff from people because they forgot to send it to you. So it could be a really cool thing. And another thing it does is it relieves the wedding blues. I know we've discussed this before. It is a real thing that after the wedding, you get blue, depressed because you're not planning a wedding anymore. It's over and done with, and you you want to do it for somebody else. So this is a great way of relieving that depression or that stress uh, of the wedding blues is do your social media review. What a lot of people don't realize is there's certain gifts you have to be very careful with. And one is storing your china and your silver properly, because uh, you don't want these things to get damaged. China, you definitely have to have it in a spot that it's going to be protected because those are things that chip and break very easily. So if you don't have a cabinet for that, you just don't want to put it in boxes where Mm -hmm. uh, one day you go grab that box and you realize you just dropped all your china. If it's a a tradition in your family uh, that it's been given as gifts, then, you know, you you need to have a server or a hutch or something like that to store it in. But uh, on the retail side of it, you go to a furniture store and you're trying to find a, a hutch or a cabinet to hold this stuff in it, places don't sell them anymore. So I'm not sure whether this is a tip that is kind of going out of trend, whether couples are not buying china and silver anymore. But I mean, you have to have plates to eat off. You have to have silverware. So you have to have somewhere to store it. Yeah, I haven't seen much for china and silver anymore myself. I know for Vanessa and I, when we got married, my mother actually bought these two beautiful wooden boxes that had the silverware all we had everything oh from the man knives, the forks to the servers everything it's the most beautiful set and she had a special plate engraved on top it was the nicest thing and uh, lucky for me she did have a hutch cabinet which she uh, ended up giving us and uh, we were able to use that that was awesome finally we're going to discuss the all-important change your name now as you know 
my good host with the most, Sal here, is a, an officiant. So he knows all about what you have to do after the wedding about changing your name. So Sal, take it away. So I am going to simplify it with a website, Miss Now Mrs. Dot com. That's M I S S now N O W Mrs. M R S dot com. This is a service that will find out everything that's needed for you to change by you because you're going to have credit cards and everything. And they will literally create all the paperwork, send it to you with where you have to put your signature and where you'd send it out to make it very very simple because you don't have to just change your credit cards. You have to worry about your social security card, your driver's license, and don't forget your passport too. So there's many things to remember. And you also have to get the proper change for the health insurance and whoever's you know having the health insurance uh, in the family. This website will really simplify it. Yes, you can do it all on your own, but you will find that it could be a bit of a a bit of a hassle and takes a lot of time. So this really cuts down all the time and makes it very simple for you. What a great idea. I wish I had that one. Uh, we got married. My wife uh, and I had to go to DMV. And let me tell you, that's not, not a pleasurable trip. If somebody can do it for you and tell you where you need to sign, I'm in. <laughs> you know, uh, times have changed. Times have changed. And I, and I know that was, wasn't around for me either. And uh, one of the DJs in our, within our company, uh, when he got married, that's what his now wife did. And let me tell you, she said it was the simplest thing. It literally came in a big envelope and there were stickers here, sign here, sign here, where to send it and done. What a beautiful thing. So here today, we've discussed the must-do post-wedding task. And remember at the top of the show, I asked you to get your pen and papers. Well, if you didn't, here is the checklist again. Make sure that you send out thank you cards. Have your wedding dress clean and preserved. Gift those printed photo albums to close family members or friends. Repurpose your flowers if you didn't do so already on your wedding day. Reuse leftover wedding favors if you can. Leave vendor reviews. So, so, so important. Thank your vendors. Leave them a review on Google. Please, if you don't do anywhere else, do Google freeze that wedding cake, especially if you want to eat it a year later. Give your in-laws and parents a very personalized gift. Finish your registry, do your social media review and get rid of those wedding blues. Properly store your china and silver and change the name on all your accounts. You're listening to the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast. So there you have it. We just shared with you must-do post-wedding tasks. This helpful review is the crucial final step in your wedding planning. Now, as you spend the next week planning your wedding, if you want me, Sam, or our community of stress-free engaged couples and wedding experts to answer any wedding-related questions, join us over in the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Facebook group. Once you're in, go ahead and show your concerns and worries, and we'll let you know if you're on the right track or if there's something you need to work on. The link to join us is in the show notes of this edition, or go to Facebook and search for the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Community. Remember, a new edition of the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast is released every Wednesday. Subscribe and get it first. We'll catch you then. Ciao. Thank you for listening to this edition. If you've enjoyed what you've just listened to, leave a review and share it with a friend or someone who would benefit from this information. So until next time, it's TTFN. That's all for now. The Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast is produced and copyrighted by Atmosphere Productions in association with After Hours Events of New England. Sponsored in part by Clear Vision Productions and the Wedding Styles of Connecticut Wedding Show Series.